Welcome back, Ultimate Frisbee players out there in the world. Ryan Lowe here. I apologize for the massive lapse in content from me. I didn't have any Frisbee this season. Uh, my league didn't run at all, so I didn't get any new footage. And I was generally feeling uninspired to publish anything. So um, I am prompted forward by a subscriber who sent me a message asking how I would go about developing a strong mindset for Ultimate Frisbee and how to deal with stress and anxiety that might be arising in game. So the first issue that this subscriber mentioned was uh, feeling intimidated when playing with advanced or highly skilled, talented players. And I totally know that feeling when I started playing uh, in more competitive leagues at higher levels and not being one of the stronger players on the team, in fact, being one of the weaker players on the team, I felt as though I didn't belong. And that's where, when you're not feeling as though you belong in a place, you might start to play down to that level. You might actually play less uh, aptly than you might otherwise if you were a big fish in a small pond. So it's this ego-derived storytelling that we need to start to avoid doing. And in order to do that, a helpful word to tack on to any negative thought is the word yet. And this is just stolen from education. Uh, recently in North America, I don't know how it is elsewhere in the world, but our early childhood educators are starting to modify how kids are performing their own self-talk. So when a kid says, I can't add, or I just can't do it, those types of sentences, and if the educator hears that happen out loud, they will make sure to prompt the child to think of it as a yet situation as opposed to a fixed situation. So the same thing can apply to Frisbee. I can't make that throw yet. I can't catch that yet. I can't push a scuba or lay out yet. These are all things that take time to develop. No one was, no one stepped onto the turf or the pitch or the field their very first time and could do all of these things. Everyone had to develop these skills and talents and abilities over the long term. And the players who amass the greatest skill and experience and resiliency on field are the same players who have that growth mindset. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, rest assured that those fears, those feelings of concern that you're not quite there are actually good clues that you're on the right track because they imply that what you're doing has meaning and it's kind of a it's a funny roundabout thing to think about but if they were meaningless if the game of ultimate didn't mean anything to you then there would be no fear of failure in fact you would just be indifferent and very blasé about the fact that you were playing at all so to have some nerves or some nervous energy or some fear or some sense of unworthiness is actually uh, a clue that you're doing something that has great meaning for you and that you're on the right track. So in order to circumvent that, one technique that's good to use is the word yet. I just can't do it yet. Try to continuously think about things as being in development, because they always will be. There's never any end destination where you catch every disc, you make every throw, you defend successfully every time. That's just not the case. It's always this continuous path of two steps forward, one step back. The other thing that this subscriber mentioned was um, a fear of looking stupid in front of his fellow players. And that is one of the most natural things I think all of us have experienced, not only in Frisbee, but in any aspect of life. The fear that when you risk making an effort for something that is slightly maybe outside of our current comfort zone, then the failure to succeed in front of everybody else might make you look dumb. And that, I mean, I can't count the number of times that I've felt that way. So. I mean, if you're feeling this way, rest assured that you're not alone. We all feel that way at some point in some arena of our lives where we're putting ourselves on the line. And I think this stuff, I mean, dates back to tribal belonging. I mean, one of the most important things for 
like Paleolithic and previous, I'm just making words up here, prehistoric humans is the ability to maintain a good standing in a tribe. And this wiring, I think, can inhibit our, our willingness to make risks on something like a Frisbee team, which can feel very much like a tribe. So this is where you kind of have to look at whether or not the team is inhibiting your risk taking, which is where all of your skill development and growth is going to come from, is taking small risks and learning from them when they don't go well. So you risk a throw that's outside your current comfort zone or just at the edge of your skill level, maybe that throw is complete and then you get to gain some confidence or maybe the throw is incomplete and you learn from maybe why, what factors contributed to that incompletion. But these are all things that you're doing at the edge of your skill level. So you always wanna be playing at that edge. Now, two things that might prevent you from doing that, the first being, is your team's culture one of one oriented toward victory at all costs or more slanted toward developing its players, maybe having fun and enjoying the game a little more. That can be tricky to determine because teams aren't one or the other at all times. I mean, they kind of shift depending on the situation, but one way to tell whether or not your team is a little more victory and winning oriented and a little less development oriented can be how they or can be noticed in how they speak to their beginner players or their less experienced players. If every time a less experienced player catches the disc, everyone on the team is yelling dump, as in pass back to a handler, get the disc away from you as a beginner, don't risk any forward throws, that's probably a more winning oriented team. So if you hear a lot of dump, 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 that team's more interested in winning. Now, you can also look at whether or not a team is yelling encouragement to that player to prove the opposite, to prove that that team is more of a development-oriented team. If you hear after a beginner tries a tough throw, a throw that's at the edge of that beginner's ability, and people yell, good try, good effort, almost, better luck next time, whatever it is, if they're yelling encouragement, that team is probably more development-oriented. So that can be one thing that really does pull a beginner in one direction or another with regard to taking those risks and developing uh, and, and having confidence and the feelings of safety and security on that team to make those types of plays and to continue to progress as a player. So what you want as a beginner is to be on a team that supports you playing at the edge of what you can do and that's where you're going to grow. If you're already on a team like that and you still find that despite all the support in the world from your uh, fellow players, your peers, your captain, even your opponents, if you're getting all the support externally but you still find there's some internal, great internal resistance to you trying and maybe failing and putting forth that effort, if that fear of failure is still hobbling you and preventing you from moving forward, then that is probably an indication that you're being too hard on yourself. Uh, and again, I have fallen into this trap many times. I continue to fall in this trap, not only in Frisbee, but in other aspects of my life as a father, as a provider, as a friend. Um, that's that self-talk that you have where you're being a little too rough on yourself and you know that you're being too rough on yourself or too hard on yourself because you would never speak this way to a friend or to a loved one. Um, you know, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but things like, you know, maybe you're playing Frisbee and you, you miss a throw and you go, oh, I suck, that was a stupid play, that was a bad choice, or whatever it is. You would never say those same words to a teammate or to a friend because that is a pretty cruel thing to say to anyone. So the question becomes, why then am I saying it to myself? Why are you saying it to yourself? So being aware of that highly critical self-talk, which may have been learned from a parent, may have been learned from watching other people speak to themselves that way, being aware of that self-talk, and then at first just noticing it and going, okay, I am doing that. Is that helping me? Is that 
in providing, am I providing my own support in moving in a direction where I feel as though I will support my own mistakes. I will be tolerant of my own failures in a game where failure and mistakes are a guarantee. You will always make mistakes. You will always fail. So will I, and I continue to every single day that I try to play this game. So when you have that mindset of I'm failing, I'm a loser, I don't belong here, that tendency to think that way, I think is very ego derived. It's that uh, part of your mind that is the thinking sort of chattering monkey mind. If any of you are into meditation uh, and are familiar with the default mode network in your, in your brain, that's the part that is very useful for day-to-day -day logistical sort of tasks and getting stuff done and being a tool of thinking. That's part of what separates us from the animals, but it's also a, an impediment to getting into an athletic state of like the zone. So if you ever talk to a, a player who can sort of just flow with the game and play really well, they enter this almost zen-like non-thinking state where they're just being. They're just relying on their instincts and their intuitions to play the game via the patterns that they've learned and the opportunities that they can almost just infer from how the game is going. And I'm sure you've had these experiences of flow too, where you lose track of time, you lose track of whether or not sometimes you can get to the state where you, you almost kind of lose a sense of yourself. And that's where you want to be uh, as much as possible in every aspect of life ultimate frisbee included, you want to get into that flow state. And one of the biggest impediments to the flow state is self-deprecating thought and patterns that tear yourself down. As far as advice as to how to stop thinking negatively and stop having those thoughts of doubt, I don't know that they can be stopped. I think it's more a matter of recognizing them coexisting with them, but like Brene Brown says, not letting them drive, not letting them ever steer the car. So fear will come along for the ride. This journey of playing Frisbee that you're on, there will always be fear, but hopefully fear is more a passenger and less of a driver, less of a decision maker. Um, I've got a list of points here. I kind of rambled there. I'm going to try to get myself back on track. The other thing my subscriber mentioned was giving up easily when your team is losing. And I, I'm very familiar with this feeling as well, where a game can feel lost, a game can feel hopeless, especially when you're way down on the scoreboard. It looks like the end result is a foregone conclusion and that you're going to lose. Why not take your foot off the gas a little bit? Why not ease up? Why not be comfortable in getting beaten? The reason why you don't is because you will respect yourself less if you give up. And I think this subscriber is starting to feel that way when mentioning that it's not a good feeling to give up before the game's over. So what might be useful is reframing that situation as an opportunity to play as the underdog. There's nothing more terrifying in high level frisbee play even like recreational frisbee than a team that just like is unscathed and unwavering in their relentless efforts to win that's a team that you can never as the winning team if you're up on the scoreboard you can never relax because that team is packed full of players who are going to finish the game at full effort so when I'm in a situation where I'm losing, I try to remind myself that this is actually a great opportunity to try for a comeback win. And that's my best advice for those situations, is if you're ever down, doesn't matter what the score is, you're practicing, a, you're practicing trying to play for a comeback victory, an underdog win, a Cinderella story. Those are the best stories anyway. Think about games where you have come back from a massive deficit and won. Those are the stories you tell your friends. Nobody cares when 
you easily won a game and it wasn't that hard and you beat the team handily and they didn't put up much of a fight. That's not something you're going to remember. So see those opportunities, see those games where you're down as opportunities for a great story later, opportunities to prove that you can still put forth that effort regardless of what the scoreboard says. Uh, the next point was talent. Um, Sonia, the subscriber who was asking all of these questions, asked if I believe that talent plays much of a factor in Ultimate Frisbee, and for sure it does in the beginning. Uh, right out of the gate, you're going to see players come into the sport with different levels of ability. Some players have come from soccer or volleyball or football or some other game where they've got all of these transferable talents. Or maybe they're just more athletic or have better hand-eye coordination. For sure we all have different starting points. And those starting points are far less important than any of us, I think, imagine they are. What's way more important is this idea of grit, which refers back to that first point when we were talking, or the last point, which was about the Cinderella story and the comeback win and playing as an underdog. Those are gritty players. Gritty players are more useful on a team than are ego-driven, delicate, fragile, but very talented players. A couple of years ago, prior to the pandemic, I was watching the finals in my city. My team didn't make it, but we were in the stands having a couple drinks and watching this like really awesome show of talent. All of these extremely talented players, they had to be at that you know, level of play. They all had to have some talent, whether or not they uh, I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want it to be like they were talented to begin with. It's kind of like they built this skill. So let's say instead of talented, they were all very skilled players at this point. Many of them didn't start out with much talent, but had to apply themselves and work at it over time. They got themselves to this stage. There was a specific player, highly talented, uh, now playing for a professional team, but not very experienced, not very gritty. And that player, when the pressure was on, I think started to fall apart because this player had relied upon talent all the way up to that point and didn't have to ever rely upon a grittier aspect of the game or didn't have all of that experience slowly building skill and fighting for every bit of uh, ability. It was just kind of there to start with. It had never been tested, never been questioned. So that player folded and the sort of slow grind, slow burn, highly skilled players that had built that ability over the course of years and years and probably decades to be truthful, they just kind of steamrolled over this guy who was better than all of them, but more fragile because I think talent says nothing about grit. And if I could pick talent or grit, talent or work ethic, I'm going to go with work, ec work ethic every time, grit every time. Talent is a bonus. If you have it, great. If you don't, just go out and work hard. You'll get there. The last thing I'm going to say about stress, anxiety, and how those things can be mitigated so that you'll play Ultimate Frisbee at your best and enjoy it to the utmost is that it doesn't start and stop. Considerations do not start and stop regarding stress when the game starts and when the game ends. It's a, an all-encompassing thing. It blends into the rest of your life. If you're not sleeping well, if you're not eating well, if you don't have good social connections, if you're not supported through a peer group and a family where you're experiencing a sense of meaningful belonging and inclusion and importance and value and respect, you're naturally going to be less tolerant to stress in a Frisbee game and in every other aspect of your life than you would be if you have all of those boxes checked where you're eating well, you're sleeping uh, more than your eight hours if you need it every day. And as Frisbee players, we do need a lot of sleep to recover after those epic practices and matches. And for specific tips as to how to fill those reserves of stress tolerance and to lower anxiety, two awesome things to start with are cut down or eliminate drinking alcohol and cut down or eliminate uh, other sort of intoxicants, including caffeine, that's a drug, 
try to get your body to this baseline where you are as naturally fueled as possible. You're not drinking energy drinks. Those are just going to like fire up your cortisol and get you more into a stressful sympathetic zone to begin with. Enter the game relaxed. Make sure that you've rested. I'm going to say that a billion times. Take care of your body. Stress. Uh, oh, sorry. St my mind is on stress. Stretch and roll out. Just maintain your overall health and you will naturally be more ready to tolerate stress and anxiety in the Frisbee game. If you have any questions or if you just want to share your experience, because sometimes it can really help to just type out how you've been feeling, throw those in the comments. If anyone wants to learn uh, how to throw the Frisbee forehand or backhand, I do have free training at frisbeethrows.com for forehand training. I also have started doing actual uh, video analysis breakdowns of people's technique. So if you want to hire me to study your throwing technique, I'll actually do a technical breakdown of your throw. Again, you can find that in the video description below. I'll send a link to it, but otherwise have a stress-free day. I love you all. I'll try to post another video sooner versus later. Good night.